You know, ladies and gentlemen, the Milwaukee Brewers of the 1970s and 1980s had a balanced attack, including, uh, you know, great uh, players like Paul Molitor, Robert Yount, uh, Sal Bando. But this guy really was uh, not, say, the straw that stirred the drink, but he hit enough homers to rival Reggie Jackson as a uh, dinger hitter during that uh, heady uh, mid-1970s uh, to the early 1980s. Of course, we're going to be talking about the man he called Gorman, Gorman Thomas, now born James Gorman Thomas III in Charleston, South Carolina, in December 12, 1950. He played Major League Baseball as an accomplished center fielder and right-handed hitter. He uh, starred in the American League with the Brewers from 73 to 76, 78 to 83, and 1986. He also played with the Indians in 83 and the Mariners in 84 and 86, and of course helped them get the Brewers get to the 82 World Series and also uh, uh, distinguished playoff runs as well. Now, with the Brewers, Thomas was one of the franchise's most popular and effective players. He was a leading home run hitter in the late 70s and early 80s, though he hit for a low batting average and frequently struck out. Thomas had a good fielding skills and his throwing arm was strong until shoulder surgery in 84, after which he became a designated hitter until his retirement in 86. He was born again in Charleston. His father, Gorman Sr., was a postal worker and a former minor league pitcher. He was raised in nearby James Island. His family eventually moved to Columbia, South Carolina, where he attended Carlton Newman High School through his junior year, playing on a state title team for basketball in 68. He attended James Island High School his senior year. In, uh, in scholastic play, he earned 14 letters in four sports, baseball, football, basketball, and track. He was the first draft pick of the inaugural Seattle Pilots in 1969. Now, in 1971, after the, the Pilots moved to Milwaukee, he played clay, class era baseball in the Milwaukee system with the Danville Warriors that year. He led the Midwest League in both home runs and strikeouts. The next year with a class of AA San Antonio Brewers, he led the Texas League in the same two categories, registering 26 homers versus 171 strikeouts. Now, he spent parts of the 73 and 74 season in the major leagues with the Brewers, but he mostly played class AAA baseball during this campaign with the Sacramento Salon of the PCL in 1974. Uh, now, Thomas finished second in the league in home runs, third in RBIs, fourth in walks, third in runs scored, and first in strikeouts that campaign. He spent most of the next two years on the bench with the Brewers, but he enjoyed being teammates with Hank Aaron during Aaron's last two MLB seasons. Now, Thomas played in Class AAA for the entire 77 season. After the campaign, he was traded to the Texas Rangers as a player to be named later in an earlier trade for veteran Ed Kirkpatrick. Rangers executive Dan O'Brien Sr. explained the move as a temporary friendship deal. Brewers GM Harry uh, Dalton needed to open up a roster spot over the winter, and he asked O'Brien to hold Thomas on the Texas roster for a few months. In February 78, O'Brien sent Sol Thomas back to Milwaukee before it appeared in any games with the Rangers. Now, becoming an everyday center fielder for Brewers in 78, he had 32 homers to go along with 86 RBIs. In 79, he enjoyed his best MLB season, compiling career high numbers and home runs with 45, which uh, won him the uh, home run title. RBIs with 123, run scores with 97, hits with 136, doubles with 29, walks with 98, a 356 on base percentage with 300 stolen bases, 300 total bases, a 529 slugging percentage, and an OPS of 895. He finished seventh in MVP award voting. Now, at the time, he picked up his very well known nickname, Storm and Gorman. Now, in 1980, he had another productive season with 30 homers and 105 RBIs while playing, playing in every game. He followed that up in 81 by finishing second in the AL in home runs with 21, and he was named to the AL All-Star team. He finished eighth in MVP award voting that year. In 82, he hit a AL high 39 homers, tying him with Reggie Jackson for the league league, and drove in 112 runs to help the Brewers win the American League East, he made it all the way to the World Series, only losing seven games to the Cardinals. Now, uh, Thomas actually gave, uh, made the last out uh, during Game 7 uh, in striking out against Bruce Souter to, uh, again, end the series. Now, while with the Brewers, Thomas opened a bar in Milwaukee with pitcher Pete Vukovic. It was called Stormin' and Vukes, uh, playing under nicknames. Now, 
Thomas was eventually dealt to Lago Jamie Easley and Ernie Camacho from the Brewers the Indians for Rick Manning and Rick Waits on June 6, 83, a very controversial deal. Now, Thomas's play had declined late in the 82 season as he hit 181 after September 1st, and he had only four hits and more than 40 at bats in the 82 postseason. After the announcement of the trade, Brewers, Brewers fans angry at the deal flooded the team switchboard with phone calls for criticizing the transaction. Now, after the 83 campaign, he expressed his desire for another trade, saying he did not feel comfortable playing in Cleveland. Thomas had hit the more home runs during that period from 78 to 83 from any other player for, than any other player in the AL and felt uh, another change of venue was needed. Now, he was eventually traded to the Mariners for the 84 campaign. He only played in 35 games for the team that year but before he underwent season-ending rotator cuff surgery in June. In spring training before the 85 season, Thomas had some difficulty with the timing of his swing, but he was able to swing without pain, and he was looking forward to assuming Seattle's DH role. That year, he was selected as this morning news AL comeback player of the campaign in 85, as he became the first player in America's history to hit 30 homers in a season. However, Thomas began to feel alienated from his teammates at a team 10th anniversary party. He was left out of a 1985 Mariners highlight video. Mariners executive said he tried to trade him away, but there was minimal interest in Thomas because of his age and his limitation in the DH role. Now, after Dick Williams took over manager of Seattle towards the beginning of the 86 season, he saw a decreased playing time. By late June, he was hitting 192 with 10 overs and 26 RBIs, and the team decided to release him. Thomas, according to published reports, was making 650000 that season, and Mariners owner George uh, Argios had to absorb the loss of 361000 that was still owed to Thomas under that contract. He did contemplate retirement, and he turned down a contract offer from the Red uh, Tigers before he signed with the Brewers a couple of weeks later to fill a DH-PH role. Now, Thomas retired after the 86 season. He was a career 225 hitter with 260 homers, 78 RB, 182 RBIs, and 1,435 games. Now, while in retirement, he's been very active. He played amateur golf, and he spent time hunting and carving the duck decoys. In the early 1990s, he collected limited edition prints and considered opening an art gallery. Now, Thomas works under a personal service contract with the Brewers to make appearances in the community and welcome visitors to Gorman's Grill at the American Family Field. He was elected to the Wisconsin Athletic Hall of Fame in 2003, and since 2015, Thomas has marketed Storm and Gorman's Barbecue Sauce, a master-based condiment that can be enjoyed with various beach and vegetables. It is available at American Family Field, home ballpark of the Brewers, as well as retail establishments in Wisconsin. Well, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, a good, a good home run hitter, a good old boy, and uh, uh, not say a Yankee killer, but he always had good luck against ALE's teams. And uh, one announcer for the Blue Jays said, "What, what the Gorman could do in Toronto?" Well, uh, he was sooner from Milwaukee because he was he was a he was a, a fan favorite, or like what he called, he played for the fans. And uh, but during those three or four seasons when he was had the great swing, it was almost like a beer league come to life, ladies and gentlemen. And he looked like it too. Very handsome man, but when he had the, the mustache and the long hair, it was like uh, you know, it's like somebody getting his pickup truck and driving to the to the ball field, getting two home runs, cracking a couple of beers. And the only player I can compare it with, for personality wise. Uh, for you know the the positivity, the John Riggins. I know uh, uh, Thomas wasn't as cerebral as Riggins, but there's a lot of parallels. So that's our story about the great Gorman Thomas. If you like what you're doing here, with our baseball vintage podcast. Let us know when you like, comment, subscribe. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs>